Hey everybody, I'm Taylor Madison Street. I run the blog, The Random Thoughts of a Writer. I've been blogging a lot about Gossip Girl, Modern Family, and Revenge occasionally. And I try to focus on dramas because I find them easier to comment on than comedies, but I still like to talk about Modern Family. So being in college has kept me pretty busy, so it takes me a lot of time to write posts and edit them and for me to feel good about them. So I'm going to try doing videos, thought posts, and doing and sharing my thoughts that way. Anyway, that being said, here are my thoughts on episode 514 of Gossip Girl, the backup, the backup Dan. Um, I all things considered, I thought it was a pretty good episode. As usual, there were some things that I thought were beyond ridiculous and stupid. But with Gossip Girl, by this point, you know, after season one ended, you kind of had to figure, okay, it's always going to be ridiculous. It's always going to be frustrating, especially Serena. She annoys the hell out of me these days, and. I just frequently want to scream, and frankly, I'm not a big fan of Blake Lively as an actress. I think she's terrible, and frankly, I don't know how she keeps getting cast in movies and on Gossip Girl. I like. I just think she doesn't have any talent, but that's just my opinion. I thought this episode was good. It had some interesting twists. We finally got to meet the supposedly real Charlie, although nobody is aware of it. They all think it's some girl that has the exact same name of the person they think is Charlie, but is Ivy, who is currently MIA at the moment. And so it looks like Nate is possibly going to be pursuing a romantic relationship with her. I don't know how I feel about that necessarily because Dan's or Nate's romantic relationships oftentimes can be boring, although they can have some pretty good twist and tie into the story in interesting ways. Like I really enjoyed his storyline with Juliet because she didn't just spend all her time with Nate. Juliet, you know, she was carrying out her vendetta against Serena, and frankly, I th loved the character Juliet because it was nice to see somebody that didn't treat Serena like she was God's gift to the world and hated her guts because, frankly, I hate her too. But I'm curious to see where things are going now with the real Charlie, apparently, and how Ivy's going to come back. I'm a person that loves to read spoilers and know things that ahead of time. I've always been a guy that will read the last chapter of a book when I've only read the first few pages, first couple of chapters of a book, because I sort of like to see, okay, this is where it's going to go, but let's see how do they get there. And it looks like Ivy will be returning at some point, and she's somehow going to become a major force to be reckoned with, and it sounds like she's really going to shake things up. And I can't wait to see that, because I think Kaylee Defer is a great actor. She's played the role so well. And I like that she, Ivy isn't written as this straight-up con artist that wants to deceive these people. She doesn't seem to be interested in them for the money she wants the family and that kind of makes me wonder like what's ivy's r real family situation like but i digress um it was the fan the episode dealt a lot with everybody trying to track down blair who had just been married and was supposed to go on her honeymoon with louis but she was mia after Louis basically went off the deep end after seeing the video of Blair and Chuck talking about how she made a pact with God to save his life if she gave up the chance of having a future with 
Chuck and Chuck and Louis became a total lunatic. I used to be a hardcore chair fan, Chuck and Blair. Now, I hate that relationship. I think it's sick and abusive. I think they're constantly trying to stab each other in the back. And trying the writers are trying to treat Chuck like he's this romantic hero. And to me, he's just been downright abusive to Blair. But at the same time, I don't think Blair's been all that innocent in their relationship either. I th think that the writers have written themselves into a major corner with that that they can't get stuck out of. They think, oh, Chuck and Blair belong together. They need to end up together. I wish they would just say, you know what? That relationship has run its course. They really can't do anything else with them, in my opinion. I think that they just need to like admit, okay, just let's put Chuck and Blair in the past. Let's try other things. You know, let's have Dan and Blair have a real romantic relationship. I'm a huge Dare fan. I've always loved their interactions with each other when they were, you know, frenemies or however you want to put it, and they would like make sarcastic comments about each other. But I loved in season four when they actually started to form a genuine friendship and realized, hey, we have a lot in common. And I think that relationship is so much healthier, that friendship, because they can really be themselves with each other and they have a lot in common. Dan, yeah, in this episode, he finally admitted to Blair that he's frustrated with how she treats him, that he's basically being used by her. And I agree, Blair has been using Dan kind of as this little safety net. Oh, Chuck's ruining my life. Louis being all weird. You know, she runs to him for comfort because she thinks she's about to lose everything and of course he has feelings for her so he just kind of has indulged it but when she got mad at him for supposedly drawing people's attention to them and when they were trying to escape to the Dominican Republic to get a her to get a divorce he just kind of s snapped when she said she was being self-centered, and I'm glad he kind of finally stood up to her, but yeah, I would really like to see them have a romantic relationship and see where that goes. And that kind of leads me to back to Serena. I think she was being really self-absorbed, like pretty much always, because she just, she likes to be in the spotlight. I think it kind of drives her nuts if she can't be the center of attention and, you know, I think if it upsets her, if it upsets Serena to see them become a couple, then I say that's too bad. I mean, after all, Serena did sleep with Nate when she was still, when he was still dating Blair at the beginning of the series. She didn't ha seem to have too much qualms about that. So why should Blair feel guilty about being with Dan, you know, now if she wants. S Serena falls for somebody new every five minutes. And that's just ridiculous. I mean, that's partly, I think, the writer's fault. There, though, there was like, last ep the last episode, she admitted to Dan that she was in love with him. And she was always in love with him. That's a load of crap. I, To me, that was a major what-the-f moment. And I don't mean a good what the F kind of moment. I mean, what the F that's so ridiculous and contrived and stupid? Why did she have to say she's always been in love with him? Was she in love with him when she was, when he dated, when she dated Nate? When she was pining over Colin? You know, Ben, you know, she's been with so many guys and yet she says, Dan's the love of her life. I think that's, she only thinks that because she's beginning to catch on. Oh, Dan has feelings for Blair now. 
And so I frankly do not have much sympathy for Serena at this point. 